so originally my idea was to go through year by year in the video game industry and review everything by date from in like a video essay style from all of the perspectives of like conception from like the creator's perspective and how like he conducted business and if there was any drama in that and um also how did he actually make it like how did he both conducting business and like technically how did he put the hardware and software together and then also i wanted to maybe make a walkthrough of every game and then you know maybe conclude with like the conception of it so that was a little too ambitious so i think instead i'm just going to because i like making more improv improvisational um videos i've realized so I think instead of doing all of that, I think I'll just play every game and maybe I'll talk about their history going into it. Just read from the Wikipedia article that they have. So yeah, we're going to start with the cathode ray tube amusement device. Technically, you know, more commonly you would classify it as an interactive electronic game, but it's basically a video game. And now before this, this was made in 1947, so there actually wasn't, like, a video game industry at that point, believe it or not. I feel like the catalyst for the video game industry and, like, the term video game is really Pong in 72. You can debate whether that's the first video game. Um, it's the first one called a video game, so I'll say it's the first video game. There's stuff that it's pretty much a video game and just kind of similar type of devices that we're going to look at first and actually this was not um if it's like manufactured or produced commercially it's actually only a prototype and a patent i'm pretty sure i found at some point in the past i found like this a uh, simulator of like what it would be like this device um and I'll see if I can find that again. Otherwise, we're just gonna talk. We're just gonna talk about the cathode ray tube amusement device. Yeah. So it's the first. It's the earliest known interactive electronic game, as well as the first to incorporate an electronic display, which is crazy. Basically, what the device did is it simulated artillery shells um, on a CRT screen, which actually is what you know those old con. Con, uh, convex screens that were uh, that people play like old games on because the latent latency is low or something. The controller was just some knobs, and you'd change the trajectory of a CRT beam on the display in order to reach plastic targets overlaid to the screen. So I assumed um, I assume what that means is like a plastic overlay. We saw we see at the beginning of the video game industry like there is these plastic um overlays that would cling to the screen because of the static oh yeah these this was a trend or a fad or just like this is just what they did back then because their graphics weren't good they would just have these to just put like put this on the screen these little sheets and the light would shine like it's kind of translucent everything um, so the light would come through, but so that's kind of, that's kind of crazy. So I assume that's what it refers to when it's talking about plastic targets overlaid on the screen. And yeah, the, the creator was Thomas T. Goldsmith Jr. and Essel Ray Mann. They constructed it from analog electronics and filed for a patent in 1947, which was issued the following year. All right. Now, I don't really know too much about Thomas T. Goldsmith Jr. Okay, so he's like a professor and he made TVs. That is pretty interesting. And Essel Ray Man doesn't exist even. Yeah, it was never manufactured or marketed to the public. So it had no effect on the future of video game industry. It had an electronic, it did not even run on a computing device. Okay, so it wasn't even a computer 
game. So it was a CRT tube. Um, which was actually the CR the cathode ray tube is, I believe, the device that helped find the first subatomic particle. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, it's a vacuum tube, which is basically like a kind of, they're like, okay, so before we had transistors, we had like vacuum tubes. And I think before that we had relays, but relays might be at the same time as vacuum tubes. They're just kind of like light bulbs, but mainly why it's called a vacuum tube tube is because they took all the air out of it. And it's just like this glass cylinder basically containing electron guns. Um, yeah, I don't really understand this, but it's how TVs, the old TVs are made. And connected to a basic oscilloscope type circuitry with a set of knobs and switches. So yeah, they used an oscilloscope, which is pretty popular, I understand. Like it was also used in like Tennis for Two later on. Um, okay, yeah, so it's a type of screen, I guess. It's this. It's like the stuff that does heart. Okay. So yeah, the, the CRT was like very simple analog circuitry, which is pretty crazy because analog is really, um, we still don't really like, most computers still run on like, with like binary, which is basically like, if you don't know, just like on or off, like two possibilities where analog is basically where you can have what each like, I guess like point in the computer could have like multiple, like it could be one, two, three or whatever. And which is like with two, we can just like manipulate information around, which is what like, that's just what computers do. They just like move inf information around with binary, but, um, yeah, a, a modern example of an analog computer people are making, like they call them quantum computers and basically at least this is to my understanding, this could be completely wrong, but I think that's what the quantum computers are. And they're just like good for like, uh, or they're like messing up like cybersecurity stuff because you can just brute force a lot of passwords that you couldn't before with a quantum computer. Okay, so basically it sounds like you would just like try to shoot artillery at little like overlays and then it would like defocus, which would like simulate like an explosion. Seems like you're just trying to sh uh, blow up stuff. You're just playing a little artillery game. Yeah, and also, dude, about this pair, T. Goldsmith and Essel Ray, man. Um, they were they're television designers, designers at Dumont Laboratory. So basically, uh, the assumption is that they. Uh, we're, in, we're, you know, intending or had the idea to, like, manufacture this with the TVs or something as, like, a game, but they just, it was just only a prototype, basically. Apparently, they were inspired by radar displays. That's fair enough. The patent um, for the CRT was not actually discovered again until 2002 when David Winter French... Oh, yeah, that's not his name. That's his ethnicity. David Winter, a French electronics collector. While searching for evidence of early prototypes of the 72 Magnavox Odyssey console, he found a patent in a set of documents in an archival warehouse originally compiled for a 1974 lawsuit by Magnavox against several arcade companies. Interesting. Correct. I don't know how true this is to, you know, what it was. What it was like. Okay, so maybe the pr plastic overlays were, were not, you know, the sheets. Maybe they're just like little, like, stuff. Little action figures or whatever. That's my walkthrough of this game.
That's pretty fun. Anyways. See you next episode when we tackle... Turo Champ.